empaths truly are the chosen people. They really are, or they can be at least, very prophetic. As an empath, you probably noticed in your life that you're the black sheep wherever you go. People don't seem to understand you. You, it's not that you're necessarily better than people. This isn't about being egotistical. It's about understanding that you think in a different way than other people. You're probably more altruistic. And you feel things like deeper than most people. It's part of what got you stuck with the narcissist. It's not only that the narcissist saw these good qualities in you, it's also the fact that you are so in tune with yourself. You have the capacity to feel and perceive things on a deeper, on like on another level than other people and, it, and that you don't distinguish from good or bad. So the good things in life, you, you probably feel them a lot stronger than most people and the bad things as well that's part of why we get stuck and caught up with the narcissist is the very few few quality good qualities they have we really hyper concentrate and we we like to see the good in people and that's probably why you know there's many reasons why we keep giving narcissists chances one of them is just you have a higher calling in life and I truly believe meeting a narcissist, especially for an empath, is a stepping stone. It's an opportunity to grow, to understand that not everyone is your friend. And it was honestly, it was likely for, like that for the narcissist too. Whether you want to call it God or the universe, it, it was a test for the narcissist. It was a test to see if they could value someone like an empath, someone who truly cared about them and was willing to pretty much do, you know, you were probably willing to do everything the narcissist wanted to and then some more. This is why I always kind of laugh when people say, does the narcissist think about me? If you truly are an empath, prophetic, what people sometimes call a chosen one, those type of people, those people, those type of people have this glow and energy about them. And it's not necessarily just in the things they do. It's just, it is um, on another level, a spiritual level that it's even hard to describe. People can just tell. And you probably notice it when you go anywhere, people stare at you people treat you differently and sometimes not in a in a good manner right some people are intimidated by the type of person you are even though you might say empaths and those type of people usually are more laid back they're not very super outgoing but there's something about what you speak to the world subconsciously they, they can tell that there's something about you and this is partly why the narcissist was so attracted to you they're they're not necessarily smart people but they've gotten good at perceiving people and, and kind of reading people and seeing what they can take from them and this is partly what the narcissist saw in you and they, they probably saw that there's other people had this pull and you know kind of respect and other people saw good in you and that's you know social proof and that's that's part of why the narcissist got so stuck on you but as empaths and just those type of people in general we can do a very negative thing where we we get we ruminate and we get stuck on the negative parts of our reality People don't like us. They, we get, you know, a lot of, we experience a lot of rejection and whenever someone shows us like a bit of affection, we really cling on to any kind of, whether it's a friendship, a family, a particular family member, the narcissist, we really cling on to people who take us in because, because of our nature, because we're so different, 
we don't usually fit in. And when someone actually, you know, kind of accepts us, even though it should really be the other way around, like people, you should, people should be glad that you and grateful that you are in their presence as like egotistical and narcissistic as that sounds. It's something you, you're going to eventually learn as an empath that you have to guard, you have to guard yourself a lot, unfortunately. And whether it's your heart, the people you love, your personal space, that's, that's something I, I've gone to do very recently where I've really grown to, to love and accept my own company. And I really value my peace and my tranquility. And anyone who comes into my life now, if they're not adding to it, or at, at the very least, if they're not a neutral, if, if they're just causing problems, I cut them off. I, as an empath, as a prophetic person, your goals in life, you're going to see are, and it, again, it's not egotistical, you're going to have a path in life that isn't conventional. You're going to go out there and do things that are, have a greater meaning in the sense of the greater good. You are probably going to work in some kind of field where, and it doesn't have to, you know, have to be like a billionaire or something like that, or like famous. You could be a teacher. You could um, invent like a new, like a new cure for some illness. You could, be, you know, like be like a great lawyer that actually like isn't like like typical lawyers where they're just like seedy and like trying to like make as much money as possible in unethical ways. You can be like a lawyer who actually like has like people's best interests at heart, if, if that makes sense. My my point is you're gonna have more nor more noble, more altruistic goals in life, and that bothers people. Look at all the other people who were who had that same nature, whether it was like Gandhi, Christ, um, Malcolm X, you know, like MLK. They unfortunately they other people end up when when you remind people, especially this, and this is part of why the narcissist really ends up obsessing, but at the same time, like loving and hating the, the empath is you really remind them of their toxic nature. You really remind them of, you're a constant reminder of even this loving, kind, empathetic person hates me now because eventually you will get to that point with the narcissist. But these type, but the type of person that's an empath, prophetic, the, the chosen ones, the people who identify as that, the society doesn't like it because on a smaller scale, like not everyone is a narcissist, but you're constantly reminding people, you know, you're a truth teller. You constantly remind people of their shortcomings and not in a mean way. It's like, it's like when Christ, you know, if you ever read the Bible, when Christ would just point out things that are their uncomfortable truths. And you're not afraid to tell people uncomfortable truths. And in a world where people are always masking, whether they're a narcissist or not, where in a world where people are just so fake and it's increasingly narcissistic, someone like you, who is just honest, loving, caring, altruistic, it really grinds some people's gears. And unfortunately, these type of people always end up meeting someone who like a narcissist not necessarily it doesn't necessarily have to be a narcissist but someone who your existence just you being a calm nice person your existence bothers them so much that they decide to do something very horrific and you know end you and i'm not trying to be very doom and gloom here i'm, I'm really just trying to do the point of all these kind of videos and, and say that especially for the empath you have to really guard your energy guard your time guard who you love guard your thoughts and this can you know, deteriorate into a form of just hyper vigilance of like you know always trying to like in this per, having a shield up and always being in this protect protection mode but you just have to cultivate it more, you know, as empaths, one of the 
people who, one of the things I notice in myself, and I think I notice in many people that get abused by narcissists is, can I do this kind of, and I'm saying this as someone who probably, I myself am probably somewhere on the spectrum where like, we do this kind of autistic thing where we always have to tell the truth and we always like are, are you know, in, in even when it's inappropriate, right? We don't wear a mask. We just, those type of people, the people that are kind of naive to the world, those, the some people who just don't care at some points, like especially you'll see this time, you know, God bless them, but you know, the, the autistic folks, like those people, if they run into a narcissist and you can Google it and read up stories that those people really get done in by narcissists because they take things at, at face value when a narcissist lies to them and, and there's, there's a lot of things going on with the autistic person. They're not very good at, at reading emotional cues and there's so many subtle things about that disorder that makes them really susceptible to narcissists unfortunately. And this is why, you know, you can't let the narcissist get away with hurting God's people. And trust me when I tell you, in a world full of bad people, full of degenerates, full of narcissists, and even worse, psychopaths, being a good person is an act of rebellion. Being a good person makes you, not necessarily I want to say better, I'm not here to be a moralist, but in a world full of bad people, being a good person that does the right thing is like an act of rebellion. It is the greatest form of like of like anarchy. Like, it, and it's funny how the world has turned into opposites. Before it was like saying screw the system, screw like you know the church. People would say that before, and now it's the opposite. We have, you know, the opposite, the, the, the people who are like uncommon and rebellious and like going against the status quo are the people that are like in the church, the people who are trying to be a good person, the people who are like into spirituality and like trying to make the world a better place. You are actually the, the quote unquote rebel and the person who is actually doing the right thing in my humble opinion.